Ingers be hoon, did he hoon, get a sedu. Ye burst beer hoon, beer skier, boot, boot, boot. Mmm, cherries and chocolate bits. White chocolate bits, I should say. Today, I'm showing you how to make a white chocolate cherry banana bread. Which, it's kind of like a fruitcake by the time I get done, but it doesn't have that other stuff. The main ingredients are bananas, cherries, and these little white chocolate morsels. So, uh, okay. And there's the name of it. Oops, I have it printed out here. Let me see. Come on, right there. White cherry, or white chocolate cherry banana bread. And I loosely follow this recipe. And I'll, uh, I'll make it available or something. I'll show you a printout of it or whatever. I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, four large eggs, lightly beaten. I already have them beaten in the bowl. Uh, six bananas mashed. That's a lot of bananas. I'm making two loaves. I'm cutting back. I'm using five. And these are new. And I've been mushing on them. And they've been turning brown. They were new yesterday. And I mushed them overnight. And they're starting to turn brown. Because they're supposed to be old. The older the better. Kind of like. Um, but I'm going to use five I think. And I'm going to add some other stuff to uh, make up for it. You'll see. Uh, next on our list is uh, vegetable oil. Milk. Okay. Let me set this camera up and take it from there. Okay. So I have my measuring cup. I'm not a big stickler on exact measurements. I give approximations. Um, anyway, here's my eggs beaten. You can see in the bowl, four eggs. I'm adding five bananas. And they're turning nice and brown now since they've been mushed. Oop. There's more. Oh, that's one. Let me show you. Last night, this banana look more like this these were the ones I didn't mess with so just by squeezing them and mashing them up and letting them set it kind of aged them and made them better for this recipe they're kind of brown don't worry about it that comes with being smushed they brown fast. To that I'm adding some applesauce. Okay, got all over my hand. Okay, next that goes in is the oil. I think 
calls for a third of a cup. Eh, I'm guessing that's about a third of a cup. You can't read the measurements on this old cup anymore. And I never really followed them anyway, so I'm old school. Half a cup of milk. I have another. I have another pitcher, but um, or a gallon of milk in there. But oh, my garbage can runneth over. To make up the difference, I'm just gonna add a little, a little bit of the maraschino cherry juice. Pour that in. I'm preheating my oven to 350. Should have already have done it, but I'm doing it now. Okay. I washed and dried out two loaf pans. And I'm spraying it with butter spray, nonstick. Okay, wasn't spraying very well. And now I'm going to set these aside until I'm done. Whew, wearing myself out. Okay, uh... I make this every year, I still have to get the recipe for it. Now I'm taking this, I'm mixing it with the blender, um, or with the beaters, excuse me. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna take this stuff and over to the beaters, mix it, I'll be right back. Okay, and this is what I have. It might not come out as pink as what you're seeing in there, but that's because I added some maraschino cherry juice in place of the milk because I didn't want to open another carton of milk yet. Um, eh, you can do whatever. In here, I cut maraschino cherries. Um, I used about a jar and a half of these 10 ounce, so about 15 ounces, chopped in half, and then I used a half a bag of chocolate chips morsels, uh, 12 ounce bags, I used about 6 ounces of them, mixed them together in a bowl so that uh, the, the cherries were damp and they will help to uh, moisten the white chocolate morsels for what I'm going to do next. I'm not going to do that. Okay. To this bowl, I'm adding flour. And it helps to do it this way. It does serve a purpose. And you mix them in 
really good. You want to break that stuff up in there. Um, because having the flower coating on it helps keep it suspended in your batter and prevents it from all sinking to the bottom. The flower acts as like a speed bump or something and holds it in place. Pretty cool. That's not in my recipe, but it's an old trick I learned from making these year after year after year. But I love them. They are so good. I lost my original recipe, but then I kind of altered it by uh, using a banana bread base uh, instead of a fruitcake base type mix or mixture, I should say. use a flower on my hand. I don't have a towel here immediately, but um, next you add two sh cups of sugar. Well, I'm diabetic. And I use stevia. I'm going to make a mixture of about half and half. And you don't need as much with that. So, um, don't want to get it too heavy. Certainly don't want it too sweet. Then you need, uh, where's it, where'd it go? Oh, here it is. Baking powder. Okay, um, I grabbed a tablespoon. It's supposed to be four teaspoons. So I'm approximating, um, Okay, that's probably about right. Salt. Half a teaspoon of uh, salt. I'm just gonna measure it in my hand. That's about half a teaspoon. Okay. Dump that in. Calls for four cups of flowers. A fla calls for four cups of flour, excuse me. Um, I already added one to this mixture. So um That's two. I'm scraping the bottom of this bag too. Um, that's three. Open the new one.
Oops. There's three. And now my fourth one has gone into here. I'm going to give these another last minute stir just to Before I add this flour mixture with the fruit and the cherries and white chocolate, I'm going to give this mixture now a beating. I'm going to beat it. Be right back. Now yours should look something along the lines of, of that. Got little bubbles coming up on top. Now I'm gonna sprinkle in my mixture. On top. And with a spoon, I'm gonna slowly fold it in. You don't want to stir it too hard. You want that stuff to get in there good. And hang suspended in your batter. No, there's more flour. Don't want any flour left. Dry flour areas. One last turn. Oh, there's more. Anyway, that should be enough. I'm afraid of stirring the pot too much there. So, got my uh, spatula. I'm going to dump even amounts into each loaf pan. into this one. Mm. I know you're not supposed to, but I licked the, the spatula a little bit and oh, that is so good. Anyway, these are going in the oven. Uh, 350, um, let me see, bake an hour or until toothpick comes out clean. So you want to check on them before your hour is up. Just, you don't want them to burn after you put this much stuff into them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um. They're in the oven. Place them about the center. And now 
we wait. Okay, it's been in about 40 minutes. Oh, and they're looking pretty. Not done yet, but uh, yeah, they're coming along. I'll be back. Okay, pulled them out and don't they look good? Now I'm gonna poke them with a knife to test them. Clean, cool, let me wipe it off. Okay, now let's try this one. Clean too, they're done, yay. Now I need to, uh, I'm gonna let them cool. Take them out of the pans if possible. And then I'm gonna wrap them in a towel and soak them in some cherry brandy. Ooh, which I have right over here. Okay, wild cherry brandy. Mmm. And I'll let them set until about Christmas time. So, let's wait. Okay, see these loaves? Aren't they beautiful? And the wonderful thing is, and it's never happened to me before, it's a Christmas miracle. <laughs> Look at this. They come right out. Normally they stick somewhere down in the pan. And I have a big glob pull out from somewhere along the bottom or sides. But this did not stick. I'm so proud. And this one. Christmas miracle. Look at that. Pretty as can be. Wow. They're intact. Okay. So. Now I'm setting them. On a wire rack. To dry here on the counter. And. Once they're cool, wrap them in a, a, a towel and soak them. Okay, here we are. They're cool. They're out of their containers. They look great. I'm so happy with them. Now, I'm going to take each one and wrap it in paper towels. several times around. Okay. Tuck your sides down. Take a gallon bag. have opened these beforehand. Okay. Put your loaf in. Brandy and oh. let me move that out of the way a bit. Take your brandy and just pour some to saturate, saturate 
to saturate your paper towel. Oops. Okay. And now that I got that in there, seal it up. Try to get the air out. Okay. Now Every so now and then, depending on how pickled you like it, you uh, add more, keep the paper towels nice and moist, and then you let it set until Christmas. Or sooner. For, the, for this one just to show you what the inside looks like I'm gonna cut the end That's what it looks like. And I'm surprised you don't see more cherries. I must have cut it at the wrong spot. Because I put in over twice as many as what the recipe I was using called for. Anyway, now I'm going to wrap that up. Perfect. If I was really prepared, like I should be, these would have been done months ago and already pickling. But uh, oh, these are weighty. Yes, they're very wee. There you have it. Two loaves of white chocolate cherry banana fruit cake soaked in wild cherry brandy. They are so good. Try the recipe yourself. Okay, today's recipe will be Hershey Kiss Cookies. Mm. So I'm giving them a twist. Okay, you start off with where is it? Oh, yeah, a half a cup of brown sugar. Got it already in the bowl. If you can see the layers there. I already made that. Someone. Close enough. 
I have, well, it's less than a half a cup of white sugar in there with a little stevia to make up the difference. So, because uh, I'm diabetic, to cut back on the sugar a little bit. Now I need... I'm going to dump all these sugars into a bowl. Get them out of the way. Now it calls for half, half a cup of peanut butter. Oh, I don't have much peanut butter left here. Just a little bit. Might as well clean up the jar a little bit and throw it away. So you can see the sugars and the peanut butter there. It's over a half a cup. I'll make up for it someplace else. <laughs> uh, next is a stick of butter. Melted already. I've let this set to room temperature. Last but not least, one egg. all together the sugars the egg the butter the peanut butter I'm gonna beat it now beat it beat it I guess it'll be better if I put it on the mixers need to grab the spatula stir around the rim of the bowl and hit it a little bit more. There it is, uh, whipped up nice. Next up, a cup and a half of uh, flour. So let's add about a cup and a half. It's about one. Ooh. Got a little too much there. in a bag okay <laughs> good thing you had that lump just setting some of this stuff out of my way now with the flour in there and on the recipe um, you need three-fourths teaspoon of baking soda. Okay. And half a teaspoon baking powder. Ooh, way over. Uh, 
Okay. Back down in there. Put those out of the way. Ooh, my space is freeing up here now. Now it's getting to the messy part. You're supposed to stir that in until it forms a ball. Adding a little bit more flour. Because that don't quite look right. Needs to be a little thicker. Now nah, it's more like it. There we go. We want it to ball up. Okay. Now I've got this all beat up. I'm abusive like that. And I'm supposed to work with this with my hands. You can tell it's a bit sticky. So to solve that problem, I'm going to stick it back in the fridge just for a little while. Just until the butter in it starts to uh, firm up again. And we will be back. Alrighty then, the dough has been allowed to uh, harden up, I got a bowl with some regular granu granulated sugar in the bottom, I have a cookie sheet, I have a backup here too, because I'll probably need more, some butter, non-stick spray, Oh, and I forgot to mention, your oven should be preheated to 375. Mine already is. Okay. Spray down my tray, good. Let's do it this way. Make a little ball. Drop it in the sugar. Set it on the tray. It's that easy. Make a little ball. And you should dry. I lay them about an inch or two apart, give them space because they flatten out a bit. It's hardened up very nicely. If I can just do it now, the kitchen's hot. And if I can do this, if I think about it, I'll show you in a minute. He got, he has the the wood burner going right in the next room, and the oven's on here, and it's toasty.
your ball should be about an inch and a half or so big, I guess. Something along those lines, maybe two inches. Of course, I always kind of make things a little bit bigger than what I should. Stuff like my meatballs are huge. I think that's all I'm going to put on this tray. Once they melt out, they'll expand. I have a second tray set up here. I'll do them too. Right now I'm going to put this dough that's remaining back in the refrigerator to harden back up because it's starting to get soft again. Okay, you bake these 8 to 10 minutes. Okay. I'm going to stop now. Make up the second tray, wait for those to bake. I'll show you what they look like when those come out. All right, cookies are out. They look great. I gotta act fast. And here's what I'm doing. I'm adding three miniature marshmallows. chocolate stars because Hershey Kisses are so expensive and these are chocolate too and I'm laying them right down in the middle pressing down a little bit making these like miniature S'mores cookies. Without the graham cracker. Kind of have to go back through and press down just a little bit. The marshmallows have started to melt. To allow the chocolate to get closer to the, the hot cookie. Here they are. Don't that look good? Mmm. I never did do the other tray yet though, because uh, I'm just so hot. Woo! I need to take a break. Um, but I will do the other ones. This, this is done. And they're probably about ready to take off now that yeah oh yeah now that uh i've got them done i'll take them off the sheet and put them on a plate or something to cool the rest of the way oh and what else did i tell you about see the wood burners going it is very toasty in here so here is my recipe And I will maybe include it in the uh, video description. But uh, anyway, that's how you make them. <laughs>